Thanks for staying with us. It's time now to go to the press and see what the headlines are saying. Uh, we are being joined by Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay. Well, hope you had a great night. Yes, I did. I did have a great night. Okay. I hope you did too. Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. We're starting with business this morning. Um, business, the business NG. Uh, there are stories that are on other newspapers as well, so I decided to bring uh, this to you. Um, Senate proposes six year tenure for CBN governor, one trillion naira recapitalization for banks. Uh, that is uh, owing to, C okay, the CBN raises in invest rate, interest rate rather, to 22. 0.75% to tackle inflation or rising inflation. Let's just match this together. Uh, while the Senate is proposing six-year tenure for CBN governor, one trillion naira recapitalization for banks. What do you think? I would uh, think that this is uh, the kind of inflation management measures. When you look at the value of the naira today, these are the dollars and what are you? You will want to say that uh, there is a need to manage the inflationary trend that is in the atmosphere all over the country. But how that will solve the problem is what we have know in the sense that uh, we have tried some of these measures before in the past which didn't help us uh, much. The crisis in the economy is uh, facing really is that of uh, the comatose productive uh, sector. And when the uh, productive sector is comatose, you hardly can do anything with the management of inflation. I would rather want to see a situation in which uh, we find ways and means to really stimulate the productive sector in the area of agriculture and manufacturing and also find ways to begin to export the abundant solid mineral resources that we have all over the country. Why the challenges in the petroleum sector cut a set of petroleum products or crude oil to find ways to lay all these um, ones in. And then of course too we have to cut them in the course of governance and that of contract in this country. If we are able to do that, we will be better off than merely managing the inflationary trends that we have in the country. Remember that when Samusu was there, the governor of CPM, some of these steps were taken. We are not too sure that Nigeria derived uh, much benefit from those things. Most of the banks that were actually recapitalized, when you look at them today, they are still not doing well. In fact, the CBN at that point in time had to purchase the bad debt in some of those banks, uh, remove the management structures in them, put other structures in place and all that. But some of those banks up to today, if not all of them, are not are still not healthy. So it is this reason that I have my fears that I really don't uh, believe too much in some of these measures that the CBN said uh, is embarking upon. The capitalization, not just of the bank, but also of the blue the changes uh, that we have all over the place. And I'm sure they will also go down to the microfinance and the community bank sooner than later. Okay. Um, well, well, we'll move from, from the business NG to uh, the next uh, paper, the Punch newspaper. That's where we're going now. The Punch newspaper leads with the headline, Presidency alleges political agenda as protest hit states. No, uh, yeah, you, no unanimity in protest. Some people leveraging current situation for political gains, says presidential aid. And then police shares biscuits, water at Lagos protests. Uh, 
and NLC urges Tinubu to end extreme hardship food crisis. Okay, those are just writers for the um, headline, Presidency alleges political agenda as protests hit states. Uh, what are your comments on that? Honestly speaking, I feel totally sound that the president or the presidency is responding to the hunger and anger in the land the way it is doing. Uh, why do I say this? All of us go to the market. I am sure all the people in the presidency also have relations changed. Workers are quick and quick. We also go to the market the way we do. And they know what they are facing in the market in terms of, in terms of trying to protect food items, groceries, and what have you. So, if they are exposed to these experiences, why they will be saying that the protest in the country today is politically motivated is very, very strange to me. The output of the presidency appears to be an escapist uh, uh, approach to the challenges that we have in our hands. We collect that this country abandoned farming almost about 50 years ago since the Bukwara insurgency took over Boromi State and most parts of the north before banditry. And then the Axmen, the, the Malibu Axmen, and then the kidnappers also took over the different parts of the country and all that. We have stopped farming. The Bokwara will not allow people in the farm to go to the farm. And then the banditry spread to the different parts of the country. With the working insecurity, the people could no longer farm. And when you no longer could farm, what is going to happen? Of course, there's going to be food scarcity. To couple that is the fact that um, the hard currency that we require to import most of the foods, flour, wheat, and what have you like, and all that, from outside the country, we are no longer getting them as we used to get them. Also remember that when the era of the program, Muhammad Buhari, there was a time certain food items, certain grains were banned from being important to the country. It's like rice and what I know. The stories we were told are that we have become to produce a, a rice and other grains in the uh, environment. And we will see display on the pages of newspaper and we have the radio and television the right, the right pyramids that have begun to emerge in the different parts of the north. Whereas in truth and in fact, those two lines there, it was a make believe. It was certain politicians who were displaying those things to mislead the presidency as regards the reality of the food scarcity that was trying to the, the, the country in the field. I would advise the presidency that they should have some independent means of ascertaining or verifying of seeing what is happening in the society. Rather than rely on the official channels, if they are able to do this, they will, be, they will know, they will be told and they will see that the food, uh, that the food, insecurity, the food insecurity is uh, not being mitigated by certain politicians. And that the protest that is going on in the country today is uh, born out of the hunger and anger that the people are facing. So, for God's sake, governance is not about propaganda. It is not about defeat. It is not about trying to buy time. It is being honest with what you are doing and being honest with the people that you are, that you are admitting. Sometimes we hear that the government has discovered hundreds of rich, full rich food is being smuggled out of the country. Sometimes we will be told that there are certain things being important in the country as they see and they are being shared among the people. And no, no. If I know that, yeah, no, that. When we never had the challenges of food insecurity, all those who see it is true have always been there. Let us go back to the farm. Let us provide security for the farmers. Let us provide equipment. Let us provide improved signals for all these farmers. 
to be able to apply their truth in the new area. If you are able to do that, I am sure some of these things will begin, will begin to weather the storm of scarcity of food and the hunger can not uh, in the truth in the land. It is not rocket science. If other countries can do it, I am sure you can also do it better. Okay. And then there is this um, bid by the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria to curb inflation. And in the last MPC meeting, they raised the interest rate to about 29.77%. And the private sector economies foresee fresh job losses and uh, recession. CBN, the writer is that CBN clears a $400 million debt, plans tough sanctions for banks, uh, to tackle excess money supply. So the interest rate has gone up, and a lot of us do not understand what that really means, but I, I'd like your thoughts on that. They said, because of this, the inflation rate will come down. Well, we, whatever measures that the government is seeking us to put in place to really inflation should always be welcomed by all citizens, because nobody is profiting from the huge inflation that we have in the country today. But the truth of the matter is that uh, so long as the productive uh, base of the Nigerian economy remains as commercial as it is, that no manufacturing is taking place, agriculture is not being done, whatever measures you do in the area of uh, the, the control of inflation using monetary policies and all that, I'm not too sure that you are going to get the best um, out of that. So, but then, you should not discourage the CPM from doing some of these things. Like uh, the high volume of currency in the country. You don't need to be an economist to know why that is there. You remember, just uh, this last week, we were told that the government, that uh, the government said that Muhammad Buhari, uh, by way of means and all that, we get about 23 trillion uh, uh, naira, which was just spending without backing it up with any productive uh, activities. So that is what is uh, uh, causing the, the, the inflation. So that is what is responsible for the high volume of currency that is in population all over the country. So what the government ought to do is to find ways and means to move all this money from circulation. And you can only remove them by stimulating the productive growth of the economy, by engaging in the exports and northern, and then by reducing the cost of contract that we have all over the country, the cost of contract and also that of the governance. That I should think is uh, what we should do more than just um, hammering on this um, monetary policy to fight inflation. Those monetary policies will not be able to bring back to the fall, to be to, to, to bring back into the strong room of the bank. The 23 trillion that are just printed and was spent, that is in which the CPA now want to take back. Oh, well, we hope that uh, this, uh, the solutions will come as uh, they keep changing policies upon policies. We'll move now to the Guardian newspaper. Uh, we already have the ones that uh, we've spoken about, but let's just take uh, this one that, has, uh, that came a few days ago, a Rosanya report. A mixed reactions trail Tinubu's implementation of a Rosanya report. Uh, what is your own reaction? What's your take on this implementation? Uh, merging um, government agencies and all that, and saying that uh, some of these things that duplicate functions, they are going to merge. But also, they said in a quick one that nobody is going to lose their job. So, what do you think about this implementation of Orisonia report? So many, uh, about a decade after it was proposed. When you look at this Orisonia uh, report and what are you, and know that. It meant well for the country. That report was able to identify there are so many places and so many ministries where organs of government were being duplicated. And some of these organs of government that are duplicated are working at cross purposes so that the desired result will be difficult uh, uh, to achieve. 
But again, we must also remember, if you need to listen to that, I need to, to rely on that the original report, according to what we are told, that most of the things contained in there have been implemented and uh, during the regime of uh, President Mohamed uh, Buhari, even though there may be one or two things that have not been done. So, uh, that may not be uh, a strong point uh, for this government with regard to cutting down on cost of governance and then reducing duplications that you have in most of the ministries and parastatals, and also the huge overhead cost for paying salaries and allowances of civil servants and politicians. But let me point this out. Especially taking an example from um, in India. Uh, somebody once told me that in India, they have more than 400 research institutes in different parts of the country. They don't have that, and not to know they have a margin of those research institutes. Because why, do they, why are they doing it? You find out when you are doing research, and you see them just specialize in a very small uh, aspect, a unit that required to be investigated and then concentrate their report on that in order to get the best out of it. For example, the research institution may be established just to study mosquitoes with due to inventing malaria drugs and then vaccines um, that will educate on malaria. Whereas you and I know, you could say, let us establish an institution to deal with all insects that we have in the, in, in the, in the environment. Those are possible things, but the kind of result that we tend to get, we may not be able to get it. Nigeria is a very rich country with about 200 million people. So having ICPC, having ESPC, having special court units for the Nigerian police and what have you, and all that, in my humble opinion, it's not too much for this country. All we need to do is to make sure that we give to all these institutions a very tight schedule of duty, give them responsibilities that are not overlapping, but there could be other if they can collaborate. And then let them do the job. And then we empower them. But if you now my ICPC, EFCC, uh, special code units, and no manner of um, uh, investigative uh, agencies that you have in the, the police, the regular police, are also there and what are they? They may not be effective in policing the country as much as we would have required them to be able to police are. So this is a challenge. Furthermore, we say we want to match our agencies and what are they? Again, we are proposing to establish a state police, to establish marine police, and then to establish a forest, uh, the forest police and what have you. It means that uh, as we are closing one gap or closing one hole, we are already opening another one. I am not too sure that all these things are responsible for the challenges that we have in the economy today. And I know that because creating jobs for people shouldn't be a problem, shouldn't be a challenge. It is a responsibility that government should do, a good government that they should do. And so when you match some of these agencies and what have you, and people begin to lose their jobs, it means that the, the, the government is shackling the responsibility to a citizen, which a good government ordinarily should not do. In my own opinion, the challenges we have is that the cost of governance in this country is very high. The cost of contact is also very high. We have not been proven in some of these uh, areas. For example, we could make the National Assembly a unicameral one, mark the both the out of rest, and then the Senate, and then these are the members of people that will be sitting in those places. We can also begin to give me sitting allowances to the legislators at the state level and at the government, the local government uh, uh, level, and what are they? And then um, the streamline some other things. Rely more, the many people in government, people in the civil service, that they should rely, they should begin to use the only thing that are produced in Nigeria, not just for domestic purposes, but for also manufacturing uh, purposes, and also for the building of our infrastructure. Look at bamboo, if you may and see the way 
the Chinese people to play and use bamboo, you will be shocked. They use bamboo to make bridges, they use bamboo to build houses, they use bamboo to, to make furniture and what have you. Whereas in this country you find bamboos all over the places that are not being used. They also use bamboo to make mats and carpets. We are not doing all of that. Whereas if you do that, you are creating jobs, you are making uses of those things, you are also encouraging farmers to go into planting of bamboo trees and what have you all over the country. The coconut is also there, copper is there, cashew is there. We are not protecting all those things. The whole other countries protect uh, again. So the government is advised to check very softly from this so called original report and the margin of ministries and parastatals and all that. We have done that too many times in the past and we haven't gotten the desired results. Okay. Well, uh, they did promise no jobs will be lost, but a lot of commentators have said that jobs will definitely be lost, and that's something that we are concerned about. Okay, now, um, still on the Guardian newspaper, Senate begins probe of Buhari government's 30 trillion naira loan at Jakuta Steel. So, um, yeah, they have started the probe, and uh, we're going to see how it's going to go. I don't know what your thoughts are. Mm -hmm. My attitude to probe is, like I said uh, last week, is that uh, to the best of my knowledge, I hope I am wrong, we have had several or many posts in the past without any corresponding results from those posts. They are merely after the posts, uh, just a dump to the National Archives. I will never get to hear about them again. Uh, furthermore, the people in government today I mean, Buhari is the mentor of the people in government today. They are the benefactors of the Buhari regime and neighbors and what have you. And then, too, remember that the Senate approved most of this uh, money that uh, the president was said to have printed, I mean, the former president was said to have printed and then began to, to spend. They approved most of those things. So, what moral education, what love of education would they have? to not begin to prove what they themselves have approved and what have you. I hope most of them have benefited from it. Because it wasn't just uh, the presidency that spent those money. It wasn't just uh, the civil service that spent those money. At the end of the day, you will find out that as much as 30, 40 percent of that money, they have gone into servicing the bureaucracy in the National Assembly, the Senator and the House of uh, Representatives. I would rather want to see this government, I would rather want to see the National Assembly sit down and concentrate more on the duties and responsibilities given to them by the Constitution, which is to do oversight function, to make laws and what have you, and also to represent the different constituencies that the International Assembly to represent. You don't start cutting your own notice in order to spite yourself, which is true, in my humble opinion. They will begin to, to look like. And also look at the National Assembly. Immediately they came in, uh, just a few months ago, what was the first step they did? They began to buy luxury bulletproof car for themselves. And they didn't go to buy machine motors in Italy. They went as far as Japan to import those vehicles and all that. And when you import vehicles from Japan and what are they? You are putting food on the tables of the Japanese people and taking those foods away from people's uh, uh, mouths. So, honestly speaking, the National Assembly or the Senate, they are conducting this group, the man bull opinion, is, uh, it doesn't uh, speak well. Uh, not just for the Senate, but for the country as a whole. Even if they come out with any results and what are they? Yeah, why would they do that? What would they do with it? President Buhari has said, look, Everything that you do in government, you wrote them down, and you have challenged anybody to come and start disturbing the coming to give a can or whatever you may have done. But whoever tries that is going to be in trouble. That is a very grand statement. And the former president may have been making that simply because he knew that whatever he did in power, he did it alongside those who are now making inquiries into his activities while he was the president. Okay. Okay, let's take a final headline here. Um, NLC suspends protests, gives federal government two weeks ultimatum to address hardship 
others. Uh, now the, the deadline is 13th of March, so we still have up to about two weeks uh, for the federal government to do the needful. But the uh, protest was supposed to be yesterday and today, and it happened yesterday, uh, but they have suspended it now and given the, the federal government more time. So what do you think? Well, it is a good development. The precarious state of the Nigerian economy today uh, will not support a pro. I mean, uh, the strike that the NLC uh, uh, was planning to embark uh, uh, upon. Uh, because when you shut down the economy, you might be creating more injuries to that economy. But again, we must remember that protest, uh, petition, uh, and what have you, is a legitimate weapon in the hands of citizens to draw the attention of government to where the issue is pinching them. So rather than shutting them, rather than discouraging people, or rather than threatening people uh, not to engage in protests, rallies and strikes, we should be encouraging them. Because when you beat a baby, you should expect it uh, to cry. It is also a way that which government will know what is happening in the society. But they have done one day protest now, and I'm sure government has had their voice. If they have not decided to give government a little more time, uh, that is a normal of majority. It means that uh, the people in the labor movement are also very considered. They, they care about the health of the Nigerian economy, and they will not want to do anything that will further jeopardize it. So it is for the government not to respect the gestures of labor so that they can sit down, negotiate, and come up with a priorities and come up with measures that will improve not just, of, not just the well-being of the workforce in the country, but the, the entire Nigerian people. The country is difficult. The country is hard. I go to the market. My relations go. My friends go. And I know what they come back with. And with what we are seeing now, like we say, we need to really look it on a critic to ensure that the Nigerian Naira does not become another Venezuela currency, that the Nigerian Naira does not become another Zimbabwe dollar, that uh, we will not begin to pick uh, people from the streets who are down out of hunger. Not great before yesterday, yesterday, a woman was alert in the southeast of Nigeria to have taken one of children to the market to sell the child, the boy, to sell the child, so as to be able to raise money to be able to feed um, the other people. So a few weeks back too, the man was also alert to have taken his child I mean, to uh, negotiate him how to sell one of his child, so as to be able to use the money to be realized from the sale to take care of the, the, the remaining ones. These are very, very strange developments that we are seeing in the Nigeria society, something we have never seen before. If those parents are not facing some very some serious action, they will need to be back on that kind of very extreme measure to alleviate their suffering. So, the presidency or the civil government today should not allow themselves to be misled that it is some politician that are scaring all these papers and rallying and agitation that we are in the country to do. Anger, scarcity, inflation is real. Is real. Is real. The government should sit down and tackle it. Okay. Uh, well, this is where we're going to draw the curtain on this segment. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Tunde Kulawole, for your time on the show this morning. I wish you a very pleasant day. You too. Thank okay. you. Yeah. We've been talking with Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State on Off the Press. We were looking at the headlines on our national dailies and then he was telling us what his thoughts were. We're going to take a short break now before we return with our first hot topic. Stay with us.